Good morning and welcome to the regular meeting of the Monterey Peninsula Airport District for May 17th at 9 a.m. Um, welcome to everybody here and we need to do a roll call vote. Uh, Director Pick is uh, absent. Director Luffo? Here. Director Sabo? Here. Director Miller is also absent today and Chair Sonny? Present. And both Mr. Pick and Mr. Miller are traveling overseas um, and are excused. And we do have a quorum. Yes. Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Director Lovell, would you like to lead us? Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible. And item C, communications, announcements, and informational items. Um, I have one, Madam Chair. Yesterday, I attended the um, California Special District's legislative days. I went up uh, Monday evening and attended the president's dinner and then spent the day yesterday and uh, Senator Laird was the legislator of the year selected by um, California Special Districts, primarily for his uh, work that he did in standing up a new hospital district in Watsonville in 19 days in order to um, stop the closure of the Watsonville Hospital and the layoff of 600 employees and um, to provide health care for the people, uh, primarily of Pajaro and Watsonville. So um, he gave a very nice short acceptance speech, which was good. And uh, most of the day, um, if you ever have a chance to go, is spent on legislative issues, on bills that are pending, either on support or oppose, and why they're they're doing that. So I'll, um, anyway, it was it was a good day. And they're still going this morning. This morning was the legislative brunch with the um, legislative liaisons, but I'm here. So um, anyway, so that was that's my report. And I have one other thing. I found through ACI, they have a new uh, report, the Airport Insights Report. And it was on their, um, I get their emails. And it was quite good. So I'll give a copy to... Um, uh, Mike and Denise, and hopefully then they can put it in the package for next time. It's got all kinds of uh, information on what's going on with flights and passengers, and they're going to. They did a very in depth in depth uh, report on North America flights, so it's quite good. So. That was at that meeting or a different meeting? No, this is ACI. This okay. is yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes. Yes, Director Sable. Uh, I uh, have uh, some concerns about the um, failure of the uh, FAA's equipment, the ILS uh, instrument landing system equipment um, uh, last Friday, which I guess uh, may even be continuing on to this time. It becomes um, uh, a matter of, of concern to me, uh, and um, uh, I will be... Uh, at, at the appropriate time, I guess, after public comments, I'll be uh, adding a an emergency item to the agenda uh, for a, uh, a the discussion of the, um, uh, the uh, ILS, uh, FAA's ILS equipment failure and uh, the diversions that occurred because of that. So, um, that's my comment, and I will offer up an emo a motion when it's appropriate, I guess, after public comments. Uh, or I'll do it now. Attorney Huber, could it, you? Now would be the appropriate time to do it if you would. Okay. You would like uh, I move to add a discussion item, a discussion item, not an action, a discussion item uh to the agenda regarding the recent fa ils failure at uh monterey airport and result that resulted in uh, rather substantial impact on flight operations at the airport um that's my motion 
So let, let me let me clarify just for just for the record. So there's some information that needs to be added to that. Oh yeah. It, it, so the following item came to the attention of the airport subsequent to the posting of the agenda for this May 17, 2023 meeting. And this is the important part. Pursuant to government code section 54954.2, a board member has, has uh, is making a request that the board take action to add this item to the agenda. And the item, uh, the motion to, to add the item to the agenda would be amend the agenda to add item number, and I think it would be G is in golf four, we should just add it to the end of the discussion items as follows. Discussion regarding ILS system issues and impact on aircraft landings and takeoffs. Okay, I always forget all that. <laughs> but uh the only we have it memorized i don't yeah <laughs> i know i know I, I just like it to instead of being item g uh g4 i just wanted to move it to uh item g1 okay uh, uh, and bump everything else down that would allow us to get on with our regular business if that, rather if than, that works rather than renumber them how about we have it as item g0 g0 that way that way the numbers don't have to change Wonder, marvelous i'm happy I'm happy with that. That's my motion then with all that extra on there. Is there a second? I'm happy to second that. I've had concerns with it. And I know a lot of constituents have reached out um, with that as well. So, and I'm fine with it being on either part of the agenda. So Director Leffel? Yes. Director Sabor? Yes. And Chair Sani? Yes. Okay, so the item is added is item G zero, and that'll be the first item under the discussion under the okay. under that section. Just a matter of clarification, you know, from procedurally, mm -hmm. did are, did we have to vote on whether or not we could add an item yes. to the agenda, and then do we have to vote to actually put that item on the agenda? You, no, you you voted to add the item to the agenda. It is now there. Okay, it is Had now the vote there. Failed, then it would have not been on the agenda. I get it. But okay. yeah, you have, procedurally you have to take a vote to add the item as to use your term as an emergency item. Yeah, and um, I was reading the governor's manual. That is included in our it is. Our, our, our governor's manual. It, but it's now, also included in the government code, which which overrules the government the governor's manual anyway. But it is yeah, it is sure. included in both. Thank you. Other items? Anything from staff? None from staff. Okay. The chair does have an item as well. Um, there were agenda items not on today's agenda that had been identified and um, it will be addressed later in the, the meeting to see if the board approves adding these items to the next meeting that the board will be meeting with. But I'm wondering if there's any response to why they were not added to the agenda. As I shared with you, the two things that you asked for were in the beginning of the evaluation of the executive director. That's appropriate when all five of you are here, not when just three of you are here. And what was the second item? Help me remember. There were actually three items. Okay, help me. The others are the six month and the two year plan. Again. That's been that's been delayed since our strategic meeting last fall. And Again. we're going on six months of not having that information. I appreciate it will go to the full board. It The communication regarding that would have been nice. And the other one is an introduction from the new police chief of Delray Oaks, as well as conversation about um, that contract that is up in June. And as I indicated to you in, in email, um, if you would like for me to, and I never received a response, if you would like for me to update the board on the fact that the contract is still in place and it has it has rolled over as the contract allows, I would be happy to do that. Any discussion about the contract itself or, or action against that contract would, would be appropriate for all five board members to be here. That's the, that's the first one. The second one, Every board member has met chief. And not as seems, chief, not as chief. It's the same person. Well, and he also does not know the attorney 
of this airport. So I think having him introduced would be a value as we've had conversations about this when we have you know, changes in leadership or new employees come on, the board has requested this for years. So again, the, the request will remain and we'll discuss it at the end of the meeting for, for future items. I have a comment. Sure. Um, regarding the comments that the executive director just made regarding whether th things ought to be on the agenda uh, or not on the agenda, uh, based upon their its appropriateness, I think uh, this is a the agenda is a board uh, agenda. No, it is not. Not a staff agenda. No, it is not a board agenda. Oh well. Read, read, why why do we have the, the meetings? Read the governance manual. The agenda is set by by staff. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And uh, we'll we'll get it out and read it. But any any determination as to whether or not uh, a full board is required on any agenda item. Uh, is the, the discretion of the board and sp specifically the chair, not matter. Because it's not a staff not matter to determine the appropriateness of whether or not uh, a full board is it it has does, to be present. It does not say that I, directly. I'm not arguing with you. I'm a board member and I'm making a comment. Now, if we need to have a discussion about that, we can do that in closed session. But uh, I take a lot of umbrance as an elected official and as a board member that we are not able to um, establish our agenda and you as the staff, I mean, staff in general, and you as the executive director determine what we can hear and what we can't hear. And that's not appropriate. And that is not in the governance manual. So uh, maybe we need to have a special session to discuss that because uh, I take exception to it and I've been on this board for 15, 16 years, you know, so anyhow, that's my thought. Absolutely. And I've been here for eight years and the agenda has always- Yeah, been I know what you, staff. I know how long you've been here and I know what, what you've just said. And I'm disputing not your eight years, but what you've just said. And so that's where my concern is. So thank okay. you very much. All I'm, right, I'm, gentlemen, I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and- um, say something here. It is on our pending request for future agenda items. Consider revision to board governance manual, board and standing committee chair review approval of agendas prior to posting. It's been in question for some time how our agenda setting happens. Um, it's certainly, I, I've been guided at the beginning of the year that the chair as well as the executive director work together to put something together. And I've requested to have meetings to review draft matters. And those meetings still have not been set up on a monthly basis. With that, the title of the meeting is regular meeting of the Monterey Peninsula Airport District Board of Directors. So it seems that we need to get clear clarity on this as a whole. I certainly understand that we need to manage staff time and ensure that things are being um, balanced as we look at agendas, but I do think that the board also has input. And again, when we have items that are outstanding for more than six months from our strategic meeting last fall, I find that very concerning. Madam Chair, may I? Mm -hmm. So I just want to make a comment. We did have the strategic uh, update on the agenda twice that I remember. And um, each time, because someone, and I think it was yourself, had to leave the meeting um, at a certain time, and that was the last item, it got bumped to the next session because we left it so that you could attend. So if you go back and look at the agendas, I think you'll find it on two agendas since last fall. I, I went back and looked. February, but that didn't include the, the six month and the two year. Okay, I'm plans. just saying we did have, it was on the agenda and we did attempt to schedule it and to have it. But in deference to you who was asking for it, we did bump it to a following meeting so that you could be in attendance. I totally, totally support that all five of us should be here when we discuss strategic planning, long-term mm -hmm. planning, um, anything that has to do with uh, staff and with what we're doing going forward. I support what you're asking about agenda planning. I disagree with Mr. LaPierre. I think that sometimes he forgets he does work for five people and um, we can get into that at a later agenda. 
but I do want to say that strategic planning has been on the agenda. So it's not that you have been totally ignored. It has been there and we have done things to try to work with your schedule. Well, I so I am going to ask that it go on either May 31st, yeah. we set a date, or at the very latest that we set a special meeting in June to go over it. And I think that would then make everybody happy and we can move forward. So otherwise we're gonna to continue to have this conversation every month and my head will explode. So. We're happy to have a special I, meeting. I would be happy to put it on the 31st agenda. And I think that all four, five board members are there. It seems like that may be the- That will be a long meeting because we have budget, correct? Yeah. 31st is a budget workshop and it is not intended to be a full board meeting. It is a board, a budget workshop. Well, we can put it on there. That's our I'm, discretion. You can. I'm just giving you it, the advice from, from my chair that it will be a long meeting and it is intended to be, and we would like to keep it as clean as possible, uh, a budget workshop. Well, I don't know how you can do budget for the future when you don't have the plan for the next six months and the next two years in front of you. So, so that's it, I challenge. would make a motion that we put it on the May 31st meeting. Uh, Bill, you want to second it or otherwise I will? I put it on the May, May what? Do we need May, a second? May 31st. Do we? Uh, I'll second it. Okay. First and second, first by... Marianne and second by Bill. And the motion is to put the strategic plan in um, six month and two year strategic plan on May 31st. And everybody bring a pillow. Six month and two year plan. Correct. On the May 31st agenda. With the budget. That'll be lovely. All right. Director Leffel? Yes. Director Sabo? Yes. Chair Sani? Yes. Just a point of clarification, if you mind. Uh, Can you everyone. speak into the mic? Um, you, you indicated that you thought the budget ought to follow the, the plan. Is that what you said? The okay. budget ought to follow the plan versus... I think you've got to have the plan discussed so you know so what on, the budget When is. we discuss it, First you time. want the plan... Was strategic planning to come before the, the discussion of the budget? Yes. That's a, just a matter of clarification. That's how I would see it. All right. Um, anything else for public comments on agenda items? All right. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to public comment, item D, on non-agenda items. Welcome. We've got a few people online as well. Good morning, I'm Jean Rash, attorney and a resident of District 3. To the um, staff and board of directors, I hope that you will reconsider your policy of not taking remote public comments. There is nothing in the Brown Act that states it is illegal for you to accept remote comments from the public from their homes and offices. The Brown Act specifically encourages public participation. Most public entities continue to welcome remote comments post COVID. AB 2449 is focused on requirements when directors are partaking in meetings remotely. It is not to constrain the public. To check whether I interpret the law correctly, I consulted other attorneys. They agreed with me that nothing in the law prevents taking public remote comment routinely when IT access is working bilaterally. To doubly ensure, I had a one half hour remote meeting with staff at State Senator John Laird and Assemblywoman Don, woman Don Addis's offices. They agreed with my understanding and were interested to hear the airport's interpretation. Perhaps the district feels that since you are, the board members are expected to be physically present, the public should be present as well. But you are paid and you volunteered to serve and you have a higher burden in being accessible and the same expe expectations should not be expected of the public. Just the opposite. You should welcome as many comments as possible so you can make the wisest decisions with the broadest input. And there is no true financial cost to receiving remote public comment on top of remote access currently provided. So why not extend to the public the courtesy of receiving their comments? It is time to work toward Chair Sawney's stated goal of more transparency and to heal the wounds between the community and the district. 
These wounds were self-inflicted during the airport redesign EIR process when the road planning was made so frustratingly opaque to the public and when conflicting remarks were repeatedly bantered about and when the final EIR vote allowed only three days for study by the public on issues that Judge Wills ultimately decided were substantive changes erroneously handled and reviewed in illegally short time. The resulting lawsuit cost the public $267,000 in legal fees on the city of Monterey's side, and just guessing, I bet the same amount on the district side to defend public money. These costs and scars were not, as Director Leffel bemoaned a meeting or two ago, because this is a litigious time, but because a majority of the district and directors may seem to not want to listen to the public, which in August of 2020 included two attorneys, myself including, saying the public comments, saying in public comments exactly what Judge Wills opined in his decision in the resulting lawsuit. You've made a major milestone in listening to the public about the firefighters contract. There is hope. There's a chance right now that the public can believe that you are able to listen and interested. The next step is to reopen access to the remote public comments from any location. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else like to make comment? And see the other, you're good, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. Consent agenda item, and we've got one through 11. To make it easy, I'd like to pull one through five. And I don't know if anybody wants to report, pull anything about the conference attendance items. And my poll is, I've just got clarifications on a few items. Uh, I move that we, uh, on the consent agenda, that we approve um, item six through 11. Second. Director Level. Yes. Director Sabo. Yes. Chair Sani. Yes. All right. Air carrier services from the March meeting. I have submitted some updates and changes. By far, my greatest concern was that Director Leffel was mentioned in this um, in the meeting uh, minutes, and it appears that the ones that have been submitted to the board are not um, updated. So it's the second paragraph of or it's the first paragraph of page two. Director Sani also asked that the board review the website saying it is disjointed to her and Director Leffel also wanted it reviewed. Unfortunately, Director Leffel was not in the meeting. I don't believe she's been in any meeting and I just wanted to ensure that certainly was addressed. And that's again, why it was pulled back in March. And I did have some other updates that I'll, I'll you know, if the, if we're comfortable that they get reflected, I'm okay holding it or moving it forward. But that that error definitely needs to be addressed as it was a committee meeting report. I got lost in uh, what what ex specifically do you wanna change in that um, in the well, I, of that? So there's an email about what I would like changed in full. Okay. And that's what this is. So you want, but no, no I, I'm ready to make a motion or, okay. or something, but I don't know what I to say. You know, what line. is there? Is there something specific you want this read into the into the minutes or or what? So are you and, just saying that the way it's written, it looks like I was at the meeting? Yes. I didn't read it that way. I, I don't know that it's particularly well written, but I don't know that it says I was there. It just says that you're stating what I had expressed. Minutes of the Air Carrier Service Marketing. Yeah, page two. Minutes, two or yeah. Three. I'm reading it. Director Sani also asked that the board review the web website. It's disjointed. 
to her and Director Lawful also wanted it reviewed. Uh, I mean, that means that you were also wanting it reviewed in that meeting. I said it's poorly written, but I don't. I didn't read it that I was there. That's I move that okay. uh, the, the minutes of the um, uh, March 8th uh, Air Carrier Service meeting be uh, amended to strike uh, Director Leffel's name from that from that minutes. Okay. And I hope that kind of cures your your issue. Well, I had a couple other things. I mean, I I mentioned branding versus the look and feel. I but I mean, I had submitted notes, and I know it was. Yeah, I'll withdraw my time, motion. Time. Uh, I'll withdraw my motion. What? Should we take it back to the next time? Or are you guys comfortable with the, the submissions? I wasn't at the meeting, so I can't yeah. say what happened. Yeah, there was okay. conversation about about that, and you, you were mentioned in the conversation, and I think the meeting minutes were trying to reflect that mention. Uh, if you do not want that mention in the meeting minutes, we can take that out. It, it it was not intended to reflect your attendance. Okay, that's how I read it, and I guess I I was concerned about that ultimately. So, okay, go ahead and keep your motion. I, I, or you with? I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't either. Um, I'll repeat what the original motion, which was to strike Director Leffel from the name or Director Leffel's name from the minutes of the March eighth meet or March eighth meeting, but. I don't know what else you want to add in there. And if you, I'll make that motion. If you want to amend it, fine. Sure. And I, I'll make one more friendly um, motion that instead of face value on page two, uh, that it says that branding as discussed in strategy meeting and look and feel, but not same face and look and feel. So really about the branding of, of the items, if that could be included. Page two, continued item one. The look and feel. Which paragraph? Same face. I did not say same face. I don't. Let me get the paragraph. And you'd like that replaced with the word branding? Mm hmm Please. I'll amend my uh, a motion to include the, the friendly uh, motion from the chair. Second. We have a first and a second. Okay. Director Leffel? Yes. Director Sabo? Yes. Chair Sani? Yes. And items two and four, um, Attorney Huber, if you could confirm that my reclusion is reflected correctly on the, the notes. It shows that, I know it shows that I left the meeting at a certain time and that the vote, I believe I didn't even make a vote. So I'm just confirming that that's correctly reflected. This is on item four. Um, it would be the regular board meeting, item two and four. Item two is the well water analysis. No. I'm sorry, I'm on consent agenda item two. Consent agenda I know item two, and I'm looking at those minutes themselves. I'm just confirming that the reclusion of just the one item yep. is 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 um, accurately reflected. Yes, it is. Okay. Great. And then I do have a question about the budget and finance committee. I know you guys have had a couple long meetings or had meetings for the budget and finance on the second and the ninth. Um, oh, you're talking about the May 2nd? Yeah, finance. so on the May 2nd finance committee, budget and finance committee, the first paragraph of the regular agenda you, uh, Director Sabo, expressed his discontent um, that there had been no changes to the rates and charges. 
So could I get a little further clarification on that? There, there's been no changes to what was proposed ultimately, or you finally did have some changes to the rates and charges in the two meetings. This is on the... Um... It's on the ninth too, I see. Yeah, no, it's it's on the um, rates and charges for the air lines that we had not updated them for several years. Right. And Director Sabo believes that we are um, in error to increase them, the amount that we are increasing them at this point, because we haven't done anything for so long, so. Okay. Is that correct, Bill? Yeah, and I think what the minutes are trying to reflect here, and and uh, is that we, these were we were looking at rates and charges of the operating budget uh, in draft form, you know, in preparation for the uh, uh, budget workshop, which for the board, and I think we discussed rates and charges on two different occasions, um, in in. Uh, draft form and uh, in the second time that we discussed reach and charges I reiterated my concerns that uh, I had in the first meeting that the rates were too high you know uh, and were going to be a shock to the airlines so that's what this is saying is is that for the second time the rates uh, re remained the same and I was concerned that I could not recommend these to the board at the budget workshop. Okay. And I, that's what went on. I don't know how you want to say that. No, that's fine. I, I guess I was just looking for clarification because I did see later on there were rates and charges for the hangers too. So I just wasn't sure exactly what was being discussed. Uh, I, so the, just same wanted clarification. the same thing occurs uh, relative to the hangers. I had several objections to the rates and charges and this was in a working kind of a working session and on two different occasions, nothing changed. Okay. I see there, it looked like in the notes, there was maybe a compromise that you both agreed we did. to something. <laughs> we did. Okay. And then my, and then for the next meeting of budget and charges, you, there's a note of, are you on agenda item five now? Yes, we are. Yep. Thank you. So the May 9th. So are you asking for a change to our budget no. finance committee meeting? No, I was okay. looking for clarification on it because it was rates and charges. Just looking for clarification. And then on On page three of four, and this is the May 9th finance committee meeting, it reflects that Director Sabo will not support job number 2020-14 and 2023-04. Um, could those be clarified, just what those projects are? And I know that we'll get into this yeah, further. I just wanted to have a little bit more knowledge I think I have. before our meeting at the end of the month with the full board. Well, actually, we're going to talk about some of that today. But the um, 2024 is the capital improvement project. Okay. And that's clearly in the minutes. And 2023 is the PFM. Um, so the two the items that we're yes. looking at today. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Chair, just to uh, answer your question, 2024, which Director Sabo indicated he would not uh, support, is the Northwest Building Abatement, which is more specifically the removal of uh, the proposed removal of 1105 Airport Way building uh, at a cost of $146,000. The second item was job 2023-04, which is described as the 2801 property repairs, uh, which the, the majority of those monies are is the overlay of the parking lot, 
and that is a proposed cost of four hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. And could you where exactly is eleven oh five airport airport way? On the northwest side, it is the building that is currently vacant. Was uh, the old J and J Automotive? Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. Anyone else have anything? So I think I just needed clarifications on the two budget items, and then um, we clarified that my reclusion is standing Recus for, yeah. reclusion reclusion no L no, no L reclusal okay <laughs> no L you're not a recluse I'm what you're not a recluse <laughs> reclusal uh, so I think so I think, I'm not a lawyer either I move that we adopt uh, um, items one what one through five uh, as yeah. amended. Two through five. Two through five. Two through five. I think one was already done. Oh, one was <laughs> done lose, already. Did you have a separate? I lose track so easily here. <laughs> I'll second two through five. Director Leffel. Yes. Director Sabo. Yes. Chair Sonny. Yes. G, well, so now we got G0. G0. Item G zero. Wait for Scott, I assume. Was he printing something or getting something? Oh. So we're on uh, to G zero. Helpful, Madam Chair, I would, uh, since I introduced this uh, particular motion to have this item added to the agenda, I'll give some remarks to open it up or whatever sure sure what yes please okay. go ahead um very i was very concerned uh, that um uh i didn't find out as one board member uh until monday uh that uh, we had a failure of the ils equipment uh which is faa owned and operated um and that we were uh, um encountering a rather substantial number of uh, delays uh, and uh, cancellations as a result. And uh, uh, I think my, uh, that I was informed on KSBW uh, with your uh, presentation of, of what was going on here. And uh, so uh, it disturbed me that as a board member, uh, and I don't know if I'm the only one, but that we as a board did not know about this, which is a rather substantial event affecting uh, not only uh, our air carrier operations, but all operations here at the airport. And to an extent, it's a safety item and we didn't weren't informed. And I, I'm very concerned uh, that uh, op operations staff uh, or yourself, executive director, didn't take it upon themselves to inform the, the board that we had an event. It's quite similar to uh, that um, uh, the power failure business here. And uh, I'm concerned uh, that on the weekends, things kind of shut down and we are, as board members, not aware of it. The result of that is I was getting calls for which I had no real understanding of what was why they why I was getting why we were having cancellations why we were having uh, diversions, and um, so I was kind of hung out to dry as one board member. So I would like the staff to uh, explain what the current situation is, what transpired last Friday, uh, why we didn't hear more about it over the weekend, and what we're going to do about it going forward here to uh, keep the board better advised and what is going to happen with the uh, uh, the FAA's equipment here going forward. That's why I raised the motion. All right, let's get into it. Uh, we found out late Friday afternoon that the broadcast antenna on the on the glide slope for the ILS was declared out of service by tech ops. Um, that means that the ILS is still functional, but its minimums are much higher. Um, there's not much we can do about that uh, and not much FAA could do about it on a Friday afternoon late. Um, they're not a 24 seven operation yeah, like airports? They're not. 
Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's uh, pretty sad. So uh, FAA does not work on weekends at all? No, not in tech ops. So they declared it out of service. Our minimums went up. Um, at that point, we had no indication that weather would be as significant as it was uh, that on Friday night. And as of Friday night, we lost some we lost some flights that were diverted elsewhere because the conditions were below minimums. Okay, just a point of clarification: was it the glad slope antenna that was out? Yes. Okay, the localizer was still the working. Localizer was so still we were working. down to localizer minimums four hundred yeah. feet. Four hundred feet. Okay. We at periods during after after we learned of that, we at periods, well, we did did some research at periods, we were at 100 feet. We wouldn't have even been able to operate, our carriers would not have been able to operate even if the glide slope were in place. Our minimums on that are 200 feet. Um, so we did not anticipate the weather coming in, that did. Um, and unfortunately, we lost some flights. That is a regular occurrence at airports. Um, we did not think that that was a sustained thing. Uh, we did not lose flights on Saturday. Um, we did not lose any. Did we lose any on Saturday? We lost the LA, the San Francisco 1130 flight. There you go. Are, are these inbound? When you say inbound. lost, are these inbound flights? These are inbound. Okay. Outbound is not affected by the unless it didn't system. get in. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so we operated just about normally on Saturday. On Sunday, we lost a couple of flights in the morning because, again, of of fog and the fact that our minimums were higher. Um, and then on Monday, FAA began the process of replacing the antenna, which is now complete. Uh, it is it is properly tuned and if the weather had been cooperating about 9 30 this morning they would have been doing flight check and we would have been back up to operating um so that gives you a little bit of a timeline of what's occurred and it gives you a little bit of a timeline of how quickly um tech ops got on the project and how fast they got the job done after and they came to work on monday <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't address their work schedule, unfortunately. No, you are addressing it because I'm asking you and you're saying yes. they do not work on Saturdays and not. Sundays. They close at five o'clock on Friday. Are you sure that is correct? For flight for tech ops? I would anticipate they also had to order equipment mm -hmm. too, because it was a new antenna. They had to also dig out all of the old cables. So there is the anticipation that they also had to wait on equipment to arrive to be able to make the improvements too. So uh, just a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. I know the guys uh, that do that work. They do work on the weekend. I mean, on an emergency basis, they get mm -hmm. called in. Mm -hmm. And I think what you, you just said, Chris, uh, yeah. is uh, probably accurate and correct. Mm -hmm. that they had to order parts and, and uh, yeah. dig trenches and all that. It was rather severe. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so the yeah. extent to which they don't do that work on the weekends. It's not correct, but they were not capable because they didn't have the equipment to do, do it with. Not, they do not typically work on the weekend. I Let know. Put the word typically. In an emergency basis, if they have the equipment, they will come in, but they do not typically work on the weekend. You're correct. Um, they spent Monday and Tuesday doing all of the work. The antennas, as I said, the antenna is now replaced and is tuned and is awaiting flight check, at which point, should it be flight checked properly, we will be fully operational. When is that supposed to happen, the flight, flight check? check was supposed to happen uh, this morning about 9.30 to 10 o'clock, so any time, but unfortunately, it has to be VFR conditions to flight check. <laughs> they have to be BFR the, in order to run an instrument check. There's uh, the irony of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so if we don't get VFR, we won't get flight checked. Maybe later this afternoon, we don't know what the schedule is. But I do want to point out that 
both tech ops, air traffic, and our people were actively involved in moving that flight check forward. It had originally been scheduled for a week from yesterday, and we were able to move it to today by working the folks that we know in Oklahoma City. So we, I think my team worked well with, with tech ops and with air traffic to affect the immediate rescheduling of the flight check. So we didn't just wait and see what would happen. We were active throughout all of this. So that gives you a, a sense of where we we're at. We were down to 100 foot minimums last night and we lost two flights. So, okay. You say you, we lost two flights. You mean they had to they go diverted. back? Yes. They diverted. One I want to diver just one diverted, one canceled. So D Dallas diverted to San Francisco. Okay. And uh, LA, the San Francisco flight down didn't, here did, didn't yeah. come. Correct. Okay. Could you also speak to Allegiant went all the way back to Vegas versus maybe correct. going to another airport uh, locally or, you know, around this area could you speak to why that is that's the that's carrier choice that's carrier they choice that, they make that choice and they have no other base of operations in this area so they went back to their base so could you speak to because i i'm getting these questions too and just to clarify so in a in a weather situation like that it's the carrier's choice to whether they go back or I mean, and I understand if they don't have set up in another airport, but there's been a lot of questions in the public. Why didn't they just go to San, San Jose or San Francisco? Why did they take the people yeah, it is, all the way back? That is solely the carrier's choice where they divert to. Um, and in and most of the time when they divert, they try to divert to a base of operations. And I, so American would go to to Fresno because they have a base of operations there. American also goes to San Francisco because they have a base of operations there. United went back to Los Angeles. They have a base of operations there. And I appreciate that. I just, again, it's a question that's all in the community ultimately. So I think it's good that we address that and answer that. Um, how, how, how was the public notified of this and how was the board notified of these challenges? We notified the board, the public in media, uh, doing interviews. Uh, we did three of them on, on Monday. Um, you were notified because you asked the question by text. Yeah, I got Saturday. notified from the public. So well, unfortunately, <laughs> 12, 12 30 in the night text. <laughs> I can't I can't fix that. Your yeah. your notification was the first I had that we had delays or diversions. So okay. there's no way for me to preempt a 12 30 posting on social media. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm not looking for that. I'm I'm letting you know yeah. that I got personal text from people that were having to go pick up family members and things yeah, of that it's, nature. It's an unfortunate so, situation. You know, I think this is going to sound strange, but I look at this as a positive. We used to go through this exercise on a very regular basis with diversions and, and cancellations. We rarely go through this now. And I think part of the problem is we don't go through this very often anymore. And that's a good thing. Uh, people are trained to have this airport functioning and fully, fully reliable. And in this instance, we did not meet that measure, but it was because of equipment and weather. Um, it was not, it was nothing more than that. Um, so with that, so did my understanding when you were talking before was that staff knew the equipment was down on Friday, Friday, late afternoon. Okay. Did you know? Did I know? Yeah. Yes. On Friday staff, afternoon, staff of staff informed me. Yes. So, but we didn't tell the public until Monday. What was there to tell them that the equipment was down was inconsequential. 
Uh, we did not know the impact of that until the weather rolled in and the weather was not anticipated to be as bad as it was. Uh, there was nothing for us to tell the public that would make any logical sense to anyone because an antenna was down. There was no message there for us to say, our, our antenna's down, that means that's meaningless. So no, we did not notify the public. You were notified, all of you, on Monday uh, when we did media calls, when we did the media interviews. I, I, will, I will add this. The, the pilot community did know about it because it was, it was, it was posted that the ILS was out of service. There was a, no, there was a notum about it. I'd like to make a, a notice, a notice to air missions. So, so the, again, the flying. I'm glad those flying knew. <laughs> those, those flying knew. I mean, and I know that there are different stuff. communication techniques. Yeah. yeah. Um, Director Sable. Yeah, I, I'm concerned about this discussion because um, one, uh, I think as a board member, all of us are entitled to find out uh, that there is a major event like a, a failure of the FAA's uh, vital navigation systems uh, affecting our inbound and uh, inbound flights. And uh, that's our business here at this airport. So I think the board should have been notified as soon as we knew about this. This is a big event. And as far as it hasn't been occurring, we haven't had a lot of diversions over the last couple of years. The weather hasn't been, the weather's, we haven't had marine layer uh, issues down to 100 feet here for the last couple of years. So whether it's a frequent event or it hasn't uh, uh, occurred very recent, very much lately is an immaterial. It's a big event and it should have been told to the board. And more importantly, because the calls I got and maybe other board members got, uh, don't know whether grandma is going to be able to make it and what's going on here. They're now back in Las Vegas or they're back in San Francisco. Um, and I think the website is one place that we could have made this announcement. Uh, on the head, head page, uh, the main page of the, of the, that we have a problem and we're working to cure it and we're not exactly sure. I looked at the forecasts and the forecasts were crappy, you know, for all the entire weekend, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, at that time of uh, the time of day. So we knew it was going to be, there was going to be some diversions on the whole thing. We can't prevent that. We can't do anything about it, but we can sure tell the public what we know. And since you have obviously developed good relationships with the Herald, KSBW, that's a good place to, to tell them. And I think we owe it to the public to let them know what we know, that there may there's a problem, we have a power outage, or we there may be some diversions. Check with your carrier on this sort of stuff. But to say nothing all weekend, I find really disturbing. And that um, if you're not available, I don't I don't expect you to be on top of this, you know, 24 seven, but the ops department is, and I don't know whether they're here on the weekend or not, but if they knew about it, they should have uh, alerted you or have, be empowered to take action to alert the board members on this sort of thing and take action to alert the public. I think we owe that to the public and uh, I would sure like to see something uh, um, that, uh, some changes made where it, it, it goes into, you at least get notified right away or whoever your designee is, and they take action to alert the board members, advise the public when there are diversions, because having grandma go back to Phoenix or go to San Francisco when they were expected here is, and we knew about it, is unforgivable to me. So I, I would strongly recommend that a plan, an, an action plan be developed that can be implemented when these kind of events occur going forward. Director, thank you for making this a complete board meeting. It wouldn't complete be a board, board meeting, meeting without you criticizing my staff and myself. That's uncalled for, Mike. Uh, yes, that's uncalled for. Uh, may, I, may I? Yes. Um, when did we put the travel advisory on the website? We put it in yesterday because this, the event is continuing. So you knew about it on Friday that we had a 
issue, we but you didn't know that the time. fog was going to be low. So therefore, you didn't know about that till Monday. Mm -hmm. So you put it on on Tuesday. Okay. Yes. I really, we've talked about this before that whoever is doing our social media page <clears throat> needs to be in the loop, in my opinion, and we need to put things like that out there as soon as we know it. When the public is all over it on social media on Friday evening, and we don't put it until Tuesday, Mike, that's really a problem yeah. because they have the per the only person who answered the 58 people on a Facebook or Facebook page was Matt Wright, and it, he's in France. And I'm like, this is kind of crazy. He's at a nine hour time difference touring Champagne region. And he's answering what our problem is on the airport. And that's, I'm like, wow, thank God he did. Because Lisa's on there. She didn't know what the hell was going on. I didn't know what was going on. We're both reading it, but we have no answer for anybody because we're not technical and we're not part of the staff and we hadn't heard anything. So you are hearing our frustration that we represent the public here. We do not represent the staff and the technical people and who knows what's going on, but we have to be able to know if, if we had had an advisory, we could have at least said equi FAA equipment is down and they're working on it. That would have been an easy answer for people, but we knew nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's what we're saying to you. So I thought when we hired another ops person, it was so that the changes could be so that somebody would be here on the weekends. Yeah, they are. They're here on weekends. So they notified you all that there was a problem. Did they tell you all? No, we knew about the antenna being a problem. On Saturday, did anybody call either of you or text you or say, yes. hey, we've lost flights? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You got the information. Chris got it and she shared it with me. Okay, so that if you didn't do it on Friday because it's an antenna and it's not a big deal to mm -hmm. us because we don't know the fog's coming down, it seems like by Saturday, you could have sent something out to all of us saying, hey, we had three flights diverted, canceled, whatever. Um, and it looks like this is going to be a problem all weekend. That seems like such an easy thing for me. We all are on text. On Saturday morning. Scott and Mike had um, a request for me so I could try to address because I got texts, I got messages, I even got a phone call the next morning saying I had to go pick up my kid, what's going on? And I've got other family members leading, leaving later in the week, should we change our flights? So um, again, it's, it's really difficult when we don't have knowledge and communication. And that's what we're saying we would like to be notified so that we can also be helping the public if they make decisions of how they're going to fly or not fly here. Understood. We've got two people who are going on a big trip on Friday who got a hold of me yesterday. Hey, should I be canceling? Should I be changing my flight to SFO? What should I be doing? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. So understood. Is there a way to have a replica for this equipment? I assume that would be an additional spend by the FAA. Is it, it does it not go out often? It's, I mean, you don't want to look at any backup or, and I know out. that's not our purview. It's not, it goes out rarely. And when it goes out, it goes out. There's no way to, to forecast when it happens. Okay. I think this is the first time I ever remember it going. Okay. Out. It just, you know, just a question. And I know that it, again, it's not our purview here as board members, but it, you know, I, I appreciate that you're able to work with people and get things done sometimes. So just looking at it that way, I'm looking at Madam the press. Madam, just, final, I'd like to make a final comment. On, well, uh, just a sec before, and then I'll let you go. So on the press, the news and events page of our webpage, the last thing is the gold star mom, a Salinas native to be honored at Mother's Day event. Again, this is, I'm, I'm quite surprised we don't have a press release. It's a travel, it's a travel, travel advisory right, right on the bottom. Right on the bottom. There's a, there's a gray band that says travel advisory, but you have to, but it, you have to go kind of into it to get to it. 
travel mm-hmm. advisory, potential flight delays due to unscheduled repairs. But if we're doing media interviews with our, our, um, you know, with KION and KSBWs and others, it seems to me that we could also have a press release. So I, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see that. I went directly to our, you know, our news and events. And again, I'm, I'm trying to share what people in the public are sharing with us and how they're being frustrated with not having information. So go ahead. Just to be clear, I raised the item uh, to be placed on the agenda for this dis- exact discussion we're having out of that discussion, what two things I wanted to have happen. The development of of an action plan in the event that we have a power failure, a a catastrophic event with FAA equipment or otherwise, where we're not gonna be able to function uh, appropriately as an air air carrier airport. Um, So I wanted an action plan. And then I wanted the notification process to include the board members as soon as we know of that event, and uh, also uh, a PR plan that says if it's serious enough and it's going to result in division uh, diversions of aircraft that are carrying grandma in there, to alert uh, KSBW, the Herald, or Panko, whoever is the most immediate uh, disseminator of information that uh, would alleviate the concerns of our, our public. So that was my objection in raising it, and I'm satisfied now that we've had the discussion. I hope that something um, other than concern that have denigrated the, the staff uh, uh, transpires out of this particular discussion. I'm done. Anything else? Yeah, I'm gonna say one more thing. <clears throat> Because it is important. And you know, Mike, we had this, we had the same problem with Mr. Greer. He sometimes turns his phone off at five on Friday and forgot about us until Monday. But I'm gonna say this because this is really important. When we don't own the information and put it out with what we know, somebody else owns it. And when that crazy page on Facebook had headed it another one bites the dust at Monterey Airport, it looked like we had a plane crash here. So it got people who normally wouldn't even pay any attention, they all went, what? And so then you get every person who thinks, who lives off of adrenaline of somebody else's issues and problems, went on there to read it and then had some kind, mostly insane comment on it. Um, and everybody commenting on what they don't know what they're commenting on. And that's the problem. When you own something up front and you go out with it, you own it. And it's hard for anybody else then to take it and take it sideways or to embellish on it or make it so that it's not the truth. The truth became whatever somebody was commenting on. And that's that's the shame of it for me that we don't own our information up front and get it out there. And it's great that some people know about it, but we need to share it with the public. So the travel advisory, I think is really important. And I think the travel advisory should have been up on Saturday so that people would realize that there could be some, um, because you knew it wasn't gonna get fixed on Saturday and that there was fog. We all could look, if you've got an Apple phone, you can look on the weather and see that we got fog every night. Um, So I don't know, I'm just, you're hearing our frustration because we are the ones who are hearing from the public. We're more in the public than um, most of you. So I think it's really, really important. So we can uh, put it on, it's probably gonna be a discussion that we'll be having uh, ongoing in the next couple of months of how we put together a communication plan and who's responsible and how they get it out. So it's up, I guess, to you all to come back to us with a plan that we can all live with. I'll ask the team that is for our communications and public relations, were they available over the weekend to address these items? And I said, yes, we did not call them to get them engaged. How did we not think we needed them? 
I think we've had that discussion. We did not feel that there was a continuing problem that needed to be addressed. Uh, unfortunately, the weather was worse than forecast. We have other approaches that have decent minimums. Uh, we anticipated that those would be used. Um, the weather was far worse than what was predicted. So, but I mean, Facebook gave it life for I think three days, I, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I want to make sure that our PR and our comms team were aware of what was going on and seeing what was going on. And again, I'm kind of surprised we don't have, you know, right. um, emergency communications or we'll a plan to get to get there because I think it's really it's important. As Marianne, uh, Director Laffel said, you know, we need to own some of this messaging too. And we need to definitely draw the line in the sand on some things so people are comfortable. And, and the, the choice words at the beginning were very unfortunate. So I'm also in support of a communications plan that clearly um, you know, lays out how this would be handled in the future. Let's learn from it. Let's not have a repeat Understood. in the future. The only point I will make, and then I'm done, is uh, my phone does not go off on the weekend. As I, as I told Mr. Sabo, if he was getting calls, he could have called me and I would have briefed him. So communication can go both ways. My phone does not go off. It is never off. I am available to the board, all of the board at any point. Um, so if you get into that position, you know my number, you can call me. Um, and I understand your frustration and we will work to fix that. Thank you. And I know you did respond to my text. I chose not to call about, I think it was 830 in the morning, just respecting that it was the weekend. But I I did think that the board would have ended up with a communication out of that. They're still on here 15 minutes ago. They're still commenting and wanting to know what's going on. And now that we have that we have shortages in the tower and we've got problems all over the airport. That's what's on here. 15 minutes ago. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff we've got to get out in front of it. How many comments? I don't know. This has just popped up okay. uh, addressed to me 15 <laughs> minutes ago with a 15 minute All right. Well, hopefully there can be review of it and we can learn from it and move forward and provide better communication to uh, the community as a whole, as well as the board. Now to the regular scheduled agenda items. G1. The amendment to the professional services agreement with Kim Lee Horn and Associates Inc. to provide project management services in support of the safety enhancement program, taxiway A relocation, design management services, terminal design. Who would like to take that on? I'll let uh, Chris Morello take that, please. Thank you, Ms. Morello. Uh, at the April meeting, you got you as a board approved the contract with HOK to start the terminal design for the new relocated terminal building. Uh, as part of that review, because once we have design in order to provide a building permit to the potential contractor, we need to have all of those plans reviewed by a civil engineer of rec. And so this will be um, a contract with Kim Lee Horn who have been doing our program management for all the other phases of the safety enhancement program to also review all of the stuff that will be done by HOK as we get into design and we have design elements, design documents, we have mechanical, electrical, civil, building components, everything. They will be reviewing all those documents on our behalf so that when we get to the end of it, we can actually issue a building permit for the new building at that time. The, the review by Kim Lee Horn uh, and the costs associated with it are included in our grant request under the bill entitlement fund, which is a 90.66% FAA fund and 9.34% match. So that would be, um, again, that's included in, in the not to exceed cost of $700,650. 
And this will be, again, they will be right by our side as staff reviewing every element as we go through the next 12 to 14 months of design for the terminal building. So with that, we request that you approve the contract amendment to provide the professional services with Kimley Horn for design support of the terminal building. I would add the, co the contract has gone through finance committee. So there, that's been reviewed at committee level. And there was support for that, correct? Correct. correct. Uh, Thank you. I, I indicated my support uh, as well uh, on, on this item. After, it took me a little while to understand the, the various segments of what Kimley Horn does here, you know, but um, it's, a, it's a necessary function. And Kimley Horn uh, has a demonstrated capacity to, and capability to do that. So I support it. And apparently the source of the, our, our rounded off 10% is the PFCs. That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I move uh, adoption of item um, uh, G1, the amendment of, to the professional services agreement with Kim Lee Horn. Second. I have a couple of questions about the document and I appreciate both of you were in the finance committee, I was not. So on the questions, um, just a couple things on the contract that was reviewed. Uh, page one, so two rows of apron concrete pavement panels, that is part of the project? That is that correct. So the commercial ramp project will do the rest of the ramp component, but we will leave it two panels short so that all the other infrastructure that needs to be there to support the terminal, because we don't know what all that infrastructure is yet exactly. We don't know what loads we'll need for electrical. Cabling and that. Okay. All of those things. So we will leave that ramp construction two panels short so that this project will pick up those last two panels and finish off the ramp once the building's designed. Okay. Appreciate the forethought on that versus uh, so often we we don't always do that with infrastructure. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, and then the a new roundabout, is that the 68 roundabout? No, that would be out here at Garden Road, at the corner of Garden Road and Fred Kane Drive. Okay. So right. we will need, not only is the design for the terminal building, but it's all of the support, passenger support, all the land side support. So it's how will the parking lot flow? How will people get to the new terminal building? How will they get off of Fred Kane, off of the Olmstead Fred, Fred Kane Drive area into the terminal? And part of the master plan was to look at a roundabout at that intersection at the request of the city of Monterey. And that's okay. what we will be doing in this phase of the project for the land side components. Okay. Um, demolition and the second page, demolition and removal of existing facilities. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we are on, the ramp project is only taking it up to a certain point. This project will take the take the especially the sewer. How do, how is that going to flow? Uh, the water lines and all of the other components. So that will that part and um, some of the electrical because we still will have a current parking lot as well. So all of the next phase will complete all of the demolition of the remaining components that still need to stay in place so that we can still operate mm -hmm. until we get to design of the terminal building. And 12 to 14 months is what I heard. Or, 12 I think to 14 I've is read. the design phase, correct. Right. So that is where we'll be in design over the next 12 to 14 months with HOK and this review. Mm -hmm. So that then in about 14 months from now, we should have plans in place to go out to bid for the construction of the terminal. Okay. And so Kim Lee Horn will be working pretty closely with HOK, I assume, yes, as well. She'll be overseeing HOK's work on our behalf. Okay. And the idea is that everything is up to code and standards and all of that. And not our staff is not taxed with that ultimately as we are not route. capable of providing that exactly higher. Yes. That and and it's not something that we see that we need to have internally. No. Not not yeah, one time thing. Um, I have a couple of friendly amendments if the maker and the motion will hear them. Uh, 
I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'll Wait, can I share what sure. I? So I think it's in there that there are monthly updates for board review re regarding design status and next steps. I just want to make sure that feedback really comes back to the board on a court on a monthly basis. Um, and I think it was in the contract that it, whether it's in person or you know virtual, I'm 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 not tied to that either way. But that if things come up, and will they be working? Well, I'm that's let me so though that one just making sure that's there um that there be five or ten charrettes or other stakeholder meetings facilitated by that's all in the H that's that's HOK in contract. contract that's in that HOK. separate from this that's completely correct. okay so well and again this is where we don't have I don't have the plan of the six month and the two year of when these when these items and events are happening ultimately. Okay, so I understand we did the HO contract at the last meeting. So again, we're waiting for grant and then we will put all that together once we have the funding in place to start the project. Okay. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and withdraw my motion since it's more on the HOK side I and working one, with the architects for items. Go forward on mm -hmm. my own motion here. Um, um, there's been some discussion from our expert on trenching um, from Director Leffel. Um, did all of your questions on trenching get uh, answered uh, in either the HOK or the uh, Kimley Horn discussion? Are, we are they doing trenching to your satisfaction? Because I hadn't even thought about it until you raised the subject. Yeah, I think um, um, Ms. Morello answered me that Part of it is a uh, boring, so it wouldn't be trenching, but that we will definitely underground and try to consolidate all of our undergrounding uh, as much as possible so that we save time and money. And so, that was and the broadband that, that we, that's been communicated to HOK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And, and then and does Kimley Horn know that we have an interest in boring or trenching mm -hmm. or yep, whatever? They, they do. And again, a majority of the first phase of all of that is in the other contract, the CNS design sure. that was done for the commercial ranch. You have to forgive us. We're lay people. We don't necessarily know the project uh, mm -hmm. schedule and project management uh, that you do on the whole thing. So we get a little mixed up between various projects. But right now, my motion for uh, adoption of this was just for Kimley Horn's oversight of the uh, uh, HOK apron construction terminal. taxi terminal. taxiway terminal. a relocation and design management of the terminal design and that was my second <laughs> uh, all in oh favor. yeah design management services <laughs> terminal design yeah okay sorry director Leffel yes director Sabo yes director or chair Sani yes we can no, we'll work on that bigger picture, but I think it will really help us ultimately. Agenda item G2, amendment to the professional service agreement with PFM Financial Advisors, LLC, to provide financial analysis in support of the safety enhancement program, taxiway A relocation phase four. This is uh, a, an amendment to an existing contract with PFM who provided our our financial planning services during the um, discussion regarding the terminal building, the overall uh, safety enhancement program. We're going to need to engage them. We'd like to engage them uh, to continue that assistance as we move forward. I'll let uh, Mark Wilson and Brian Gallucci, who is with PFM and on, and on uh, Zoom, uh, walk you through the contract and uh, what the work will be done, what work will be done under it. Sure, happy to do that. So again, just to give a, a frame of reference, um, PFM has been engaged since September 11 of 2019 to shepherd the financial effort and provide us our expertise on the long-term safety enhancement program and, uh, and all the capital activity that's going to happen here at the airport. They've already performed three phases within that overall mandate. The last phase, which was phase three, 
was the plan of finance document that was produced uh, June 2nd of 2022. So that's kind of our last stake in the ground in terms of the numbers. So it was essentially, call it a year ago. If you look at this resolution and the amount of money that we're asking the board to commit to, it is to move that process forward. Um, it's a process that the contract is going to extend over the next 12 months. And if you look at the amount of money and the amount of time, it's $80,000 over the next 12 months. Um, in terms of what that would be per month, it's only about 14 hours a month. Um, and it's a lot of money because these are expensive guys, but they're experts at what they do. And I would, I would say that without this team in place, you know, the future financing plans of the airport, you know, could not be accomplished. And based on my experience with other deals, um, raising equity in, in public markets, this is kind of a typical team effort. Um, what, what they proposed in terms of kind of what their services are going to deliver over this next six, six to 12 months, um, makes sense to me. And, um, I think if Brian wants to give some specifics to that, um, I think we can benefit from him hearing what he's saying, but this is really just a continuation and an update of the, of the um, financing expertise that they're going to bring to um, the table and also their, their specific expertise in, in the bond markets and uh, what the, what the expectations would be. Um, I would also say that from my perspective, when we go to the bond markets, it's a relatively small deal and relatively small deals are counterintuitively more difficult to get done than big deals <laughs> because it's essentially the same effort. If it's $25 million at Monterey or if it's a billion dollars at LAX or Atlanta. So, so this will take a lot of certainly staff time and the amount of PFM time here is is pretty small. I, and so it'll be efficiently done and, and most of the time will be on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> what it what is pretty small? The, the well, number. It's it's yeah, the it's, time it's, that they're spending. Uh, yes, yeah, it's a, yeah. It's I mean okay. it's 170 hours over a year. I mean, that's 14 hours a month, okay. which isn't much. And then I didn't understand. I didn't hear the part who was small. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think, you know, it's going to be a big effort on staff's part. Um, and it's something that I would plan to spend a significant amount of my time working on, but I need their expertise and their, their um, guidance. And also they're talking about assembling, you know, the team of people that we need in addition to just PFM. I mean, we need, um, we need bound counsel, we need uh, various experts, you know, so there's a whole, gamut of people that have to kind of be brought in but very um you know it's going to be a light effort as you know early on and then it will kind of ramp up towards the end of the year and also i think we'll benefit from um our knowledge of the actual costs as we go forward uh, because you know certainly a year ago their work was based on kind of best estimates as 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 a, at the time and as those costs become uh, reasonably estimable or actually bid out, then we can kind of dial in the numbers and we can also get our understanding what the, um, we'll get in our grant monies. And that kind of gives us guidance as to the amount of money that would have to be raised in um, through the bond markets. So maybe Brian, do you want to give some color beyond that? Um, sure, I I think you did a very good job. So I don't I don't have too much more to add. Um, I think this is largely this phase would sort of largely be starting to move from planning to uh, implementation, uh, or at least you know preparation for such. Um, uh, to Mars Point, there's part of that would include putting the necessary folks together. Uh, which a very important component of that is is legal counsel specific to you know securities and bonds. Uh, there's a few elements there, one of which is uh, compliance with 
local and state laws, another of which is uh, federal tax law, um, where we can, you know, hopefully get a uh, tax advantage benefit in our borrowing, but but require council to navigate us through that process, uh, as well as ultimately our kind of agreement uh, covenant with bondholders or or investors, uh, which stipulates the you know the framework by which they're willing to make an investment and the um, assurances that we give them that they will receive their timely payment of of debt um, and so that's kind of a lot of this is preparing for that uh, and and being kind of market worthy uh, including uh, beginning interactions with the credit rating agencies who will apply a rating. Uh, on your future debt by which the investors uh, uh, take comfort and 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 then will do their own analysis. Um, and so this is uh, a pretty robust process. I'd agree with Mark's points, you know that that sometimes smaller is a bit more com complex. I think as we talked about it with the plan of finance, you know this uh, there are some challenges. Um, some financial ones, as well as as some current market environment type challenges that uh, will require some diligence and work, um, and and that is part of the reason you know that this takes a little bit of time in terms of months, um, but will serve the district going forward as well. So part of this is is work that can um, really last for several years beyond uh, beyond this initial transaction. Madam Chair, may I please? So um, I, I totally support this and I um, appreciate doing what I did for a living. It was a lot harder most of the time to do a $100,000 line of credit than it was to do a $10 million line of credit uh, partly because of the sophistication of who you're working with, who's going to be your ultimate buyer, and um, and so I appreciate that we are we are not LAX or SFO or Hartfield. So um, I I like the work that you've done so far. Um, I think we had a little rocky start, and it wasn't your fault. It was our communication with you all. You came back graciously and gave us what we had asked for, and I appreciate that. And I, um, I think the work that you've done so far is solid and good, and I hope that you continue to have all your antenna out all the time, looking for opportunities for money for us that we may not have uncovered, and um, and looking at at how we're going to put this thing together because it's definitely a puzzle. And it's um, a, a domino game as we go. So some of it is changing because of interest rates and because of other things in the financial environment. But it looks to me like you have uh, so far with our staff pivoted and and worked through it. So, um, you know, we're in it for the long run. And I, um, I appreciate what you're doing. And um, this is, as I understand it, a not to exceed contract. So if Correct. the hours are not used, we will not be paying the full amount over this period of time. So I appreciate appreciate that. And um, so that's mine. We were divided in finance. I supported it and Director Sable did not. So I let him speak for himself. But for Thank me, you. I believe that this needs to go forward. That we're in the middle, we're in the middle of it, and we're not going to change horses in the race. So, thank you, Director Sable. Yeah, I um, thank you, Brian, for your uh, presentation, uh, and um, I did uh, oppose uh, this uh, um, agreement in our finance committee, uh, not because I don't think it's necessary or that you are, uh, PFM is uh, a competent firm. Uh, it was the, the uh, scope of work um, for financial services as described in here that 
I thought was way slim for a, for the monumental uh, decisions that we are going to have to make here. This is the biggest project that this uh, uh, district has, has encountered here uh, using district funds. Um, in my recollection here, and probably going back, you know, a few years before all that, you know, since our, our big remodel of the terminal. So it's a big deal to us, and it has to have, be done well. And I'm looking at the uh, scope of the elements of the work phase four and the scope of work here, phasing and scheduling. Um, it looked like a kind of a sketch of, you know, here's some things we'll probably do, and, you know, and um, we're going to charge $86,000 for it. I didn't didn't understand some of the the thing the the terminology in here, and I understand I'm I'm going to sound a little bit negative, but I, it's because I don't understand exactly what you were saying, Brian. And I'm looking at you. Maybe you can't tell. I'm looking at you. But <laughs> I, I'm looking at your, your your picture up here. Um, we're going to um do on page two coordinate with the district and our airport consultants to determine initial airline rates and other fees and charges to ensure financial feasibility what does that mean and i thought we kind of started to flesh this out already mm -hmm. and uh, what what other airport consultants are we talking about here uh we've got i understand we have lander and brown providing mm -hmm. some forecasts of employments and all that but what's going on here this isn't a, like a brand new project we're in phase four of this already haven't you been collecting this data and and we just need an update from lander and bound is there somebody else you're doing this uh, getting information from and we look to you to to guide us i heard from mark that he has a lot of work to do i don't know what his plan is, and I don't know what work you're expecting him to do. Um, and uh, so could you elaborate a little bit on coordinating with the district and airport consultants for feasibility? Yes. That already. Yes, uh, you have started the process. Part of this is a, con a continuation of that. Um, there is There is going to be a level of scrutiny from the investor world, uh, you know, looking to see the their their view on the feasibility of of this project and your ability to finance it and to generate enough sufficient revenues to pay all your obligations, which include, you know, operating the airport as well as making your uh, timely debt payments. They often, and especially with, um, uh, you know, the the not the the big billion dollar ones, although this is true of that as well, but you know, not the well established, but but the newer programs as well, they require some third party independent analysis, um, which is usually provided by a, a you know a consultant. Um, it can be Landrum and Brown. It could be an, a, a, another firm. You know, I'll, I'll leave that up to the district. Uh, who provides an analysis and, a, and eventually a report that is used by the rating agencies and the bond market, uh, which sort of says, you know, here are the reasons that we believe that this is feasible. Here are the dynamics uh, at this airport. Here's the demands for traffic. Uh, here's what we believe to be the forecast for traffic. And here's what we believe to be the financial projections for the next given years that Just show pause that right there uh brian if i could this uh, the only reason i'm kind of questioning because this is really important you know mm -hmm. to to me and i think other board members when you develop somebody is going to and you suggested uh, other consultants and all that uh that this is feasible okay i thought you guys were doing that okay uh these other consultants and i don't know who they are and who's paying them? I guess we have to develop separate contracts with these other consultants. And I thought you guys were helping us, uh, just helping us decide what's feasible and what isn't feasible. Okay, can you help me with that? Because I'm I'm giving you the layman's question here, and then yes. we can go back to the rest of your stuff. 
Yep. Uh -huh. And so, sure. First, so we and and certainly working with uh, L and B have done just that for the benefit of the district. Um, there is a an additional step and it's it's it builds off that and it's not a some of it is putting it together in sort of a report format there is an additional step which is doing it for the benefit of the outside world essentially uh and to officially or, or more kind of formally document um you know some of the work that we've done but but also as it as it materializes, you know, as we as we go, for the benefit of, of the outside world, and that is, um, there are a group of firms that do that. We we provide a lot of the analysis and the work that goes into it, which is which we've already done, and which would be a continuation of what we've already done. Um, but there are certain firms that do a very formal, you know, process, a very formal report. Um, that the bond market and the uh, rating agencies and the like look to. And, and that is, it builds off of what was done for you all internally and to, you know, to provide you analysis and, and, um, and thoughts around, you know, the financing of the program, but it is, um, it is sort of for a different audience. Who, who, there's no mention of deliverables in in this uh, proposal. I don't I don't see anything. Uh, um, in general speaking, there might some be some little detail or something, but I don't see deliverables in here. That's a big deliverable, and there's a, a reports that might be prepared here regarding mm -hmm. the feasibility of this project. So, am I correct in assuming that PFM is not developing that that feasibility report? Or are they? Uh, are they? Or are you? You know, we, we would not do the official report. We would provide analysis within it. There's, uh, there is mention wh where we do this with other airports. There, you know, th there is. We are sourced um, within that report. Uh, Landrum and Brown t uh, does these reports. They are a firm, you know, that that does these uh, quite frequently. There's a handful of of other airport consulting firms. You know, they there is a distinguishment between those firms and financial advisors. Uh, those firms are not registered municipal advisors. They're not necessarily there to provide you advice on the selling of bonds or or the usage of bonds for financing the program. They more are there to look at the revenue generation versus your expenditures and and your debt which which largely comes from us um and to opine as to whether they believe that that revenue generation will be sufficient in the in the defined forecast period to meet those obligations okay so uh, l and b does our employment and that's part of the feasibility that's part of it mm -hmm. uh, okay then you mentioned other firms that do, I guess, kind of financial analysis to determine financial feasibility. Is that a mm -hmm. correct statement? Yes. Okay. I'm still a little unclear where you come into the UPFM come into this financial feasibility because I thought we were asking you to do that and you might get an advisor on this yourself. But it sounds like we're getting the advisors uh, to advise us as to whether it's feasible or not. So where does PFM get involved in this? And I apologize for being a little obtuse here, but I don't understand. That that's you know that's quite all right. This is a uh, bringing debt to market is a is a very complex process. This is just one one component of that process. And again, this is the uh, a feasibility report is not. It is, you know. Per, it, you all are responsible for it. You're responsible for hiring the firm that does it. You're responsible for providing information and working very closely with that firm. But the audience for the report is is the investing public, um, and their their informative, you know, their information source, which is the rating agencies. And so the report is is um, for that purpose and and sort of for those those folks it is just one component of this where we fit into that report 
is providing a lot of the uh, debt information that goes into it. So they will rely upon us for how the debt is structured, how the debt looks, um, which is you know a major, really what the report says is whether or not you're able to pay that debt. That report is just a part of this overall process, which is preparing you to enter the market. It is not, it is not even the execution of you uh, of a bond transaction. This is preparing you to get to the point where you can do one because you don't have public debt outstanding. There are certain steps that we, we need to take um, to get you there. One is developing a document that will serve as your agreement, your contract, so to speak, with whoever buys your debt. Um, one is to begin to engage the rating agencies, which we will be very involved in and would, will help you navigate that process, will help present, uh, prepare materials that are given to the rating agencies. We are extremely, we work with these, uh, the rating analysts all the time. We have experience in introducing them to new credits, which you would be in their eyes. Um, and one of those uh, components is developing this, this report that will eventually be part of your official disclosure. So that is what you put out to, to the world, to the market that is um, you know, regulated by, by the regulatory bodies, including the SEC. And that disclosure document would include this report that we're talking about um, as an appendix. Okay, so um, to put it in local terms here, Mark is gonna develop the report and you're just there to kind of help him uh, develop that report. Well, you're not gonna develop any kind of feasibility analysis uh, that ends up in a written document. You're not gonna do that unless it, uh, unless it relates to something that the bond market needs in order to make a decision. Is that right? Yes. So you're not going to develop any kind of feasibility analysis. Is that? Um, I'm trying well, to understand. We're not he's going... got a big job here, you know, and yeah. I, I need to know what he does, what you do. Well, let me, let me just, so for example, I read the feasibility report on a, I think the bond deal that you did recently, you did a 800, 900 million dollar deal. So the so the the feasibility report would not be written by me. The the feasibility report would be written by L and B or some other firm. They go out and they do a lot of, I would say, the business analysis and the business forecasting of you know, where is this airport relative to other airports? What do we think is going on in the airline industries? What do we think employments are going to be? What, what are the economics of the rates and charges? Kind of evaluating and kind of prognosticating as to the future of what they... Employments. Employments is really what they do, isn't it? You know? Yes. Okay. Yes. But the, so, they, so they definitely do an evaluation of the airline industry as that impact. And who does the financial portion of this thing to say that you're going to be able to generate the kind of rates and charges that finance this uh, bond uh, de bond indebtedness? This who does team, that? This is a team effort. Right, so that's a team effort. What? Who else is on the team? You and them, and who else? Anybody else? We have not added the other members of the team. Oh, so we... Members of the team will be in all likelihood will recommend Landerman Brown. Uh, PFM will help us find bond counsel and underwriting counsel. Um, the team has not been fully assembled, but it okay. will be a team effort. Okay, so um, I, I, I'm struggling really. I don't know who's gonna, re that report, that feasibility report, which is a combination of you know uh, the employments, the, the, the actual market here, uh, the finances, uh, which includes the rates and charges that we're going to be charging the airlines and the extent to which uh, our own generation of revenues and all that as a combination is going to be able to allow us to support some kind of a bond issue. I'm looking to find out who's going to write that report. And I guess the team is writing the report. No, right? I, would, I would say that the report will be issued by a particular firm. 
and let's let's we don't know who that is so. well it, in all it, likelihood it will be landrum and brown who we recommend oh they're they, fine they can do financial stuff as well no, is that right it is it's a team effort uh, the analysis will be done by landrum brown and pfm working in concert and mark involved in that uh, we'll have bond council associated with that because as you do those analyses you want to make sure that it is in a format that the rating agencies and the bond market will enjoy. So it's it's a full team effort. The final author would probably be someone like Landrum and Brown, although we haven't recommended L and B yet. It would be okay. Well, I didn't nature. realize that they were in so instrumental in a bond issue on out Absolutely. here. I understand that their inputs. Uh, as to the feasibility of us generating that traffic, which really supports well, as a key factor in supporting the repayment of these bonds is important that their employment forecasts are important. I didn't realize that they had a, uh, a significant hand in uh, the financial aspects of this and whether or not the um, uh, airlines would accept uh, rates and charges that, that would support the bond issues. Let's move on. I guess, uh, Brian, um, uh, the formation of the financial team uh, for two to three months, uh, is this like, I don't understand what what we're, what kind of a team we're, we're developing here. You know, isn't this kind of an off the shelf? You've been doing this for like 12 to 18 months now. And don't we know who's on our team or, or is it, do we have to go out with more RFPs in order to, build the team and i don't know what the team means but apparently we already know we're going to issue bonds as opposed to other forms of financing but uh don't we already know who's on the team um not 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 no. quite yet and and the um we don't know it is not a foregone conclusion exactly what form the debt will take um and we we and, and to some of the comments made earlier will have to continue to explore all, all options and to move with the market, which is which is moving very volatilely right now. There's a high likelihood that it will be bonds. Um, sort of regardless, there are additional team members which are needed to go from kind of this phase of planning and feasibility to implementation. Uh, a key, very key component of that is legal counsel. Um, and there are, and that is a very specialized, uh, you know, form of law and is, is one that you will want both, you know, regional and, 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 uh, statewide familiarity and certainly, you know, knowledge of state laws, but you'll also want, uh, firms that are, um, uh, conversant in, in airports and, and your business arrangements and, and those types of things and, and what folks are looking for there. And so that that is not something that we have on board presently and would need to be added. Um, to Mike's point, you know, the feasibility consultant could very well be Langerman Brown and the continuation of the work that they've done and, and have done collaboratively with us. Um, but but you know, would we didn't want in our scope of work to assume that that was going to be the case um and so we'll need to procure the 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 firm that will be the drafters of of that um should you know depending on on where we go and further down the line there may be uh, additional parties that are needed um either to help place your debt in the market um or to act as as the agent um that is responsible for collecting the debt payments from you and delivering them to the investors. Um, that may be further down the road, um, but there are a number of parties that are involved in these transactions. They are, they are, you know, unfortunately in our world, they're not off the shelf. Uh, they're very tailored. There's a lot that goes into them. Um, uh, to both Mike and Mark's point, it is very much a collaborative team effort and no no firm is completely responsible for any 
one product out of this. Um, okay. the, the okay. feasibility I, I kind of oh, get sorry. what you're saying here. Uh, I guess at the end of this formation of a financial team, will you be delivering a memorandum or something that describes, you know, what you recommend or the people that, that you are recommending, because you got, you've been doing this a long time. You got a role of action with all these people in it. Okay. So you go and, you know, call them up and say, are you interested? Mm -hmm. uh, do you develop a memorandum of recommendations for our staff and then also for the board? Because that's consequential, you know, the people that we hire or that we engage to work on our team. Uh, are you going to develop some kind of thing that we can have in our hand or is it just kind of a chat that you have with us? Um, you know, typically what we do and we we work with folks across the nation. And so what we provide is certainly assistance in the formation of the procurement process, um, sort of, you know, helping you ask the right questions. Ultimately. The procurement of these firms is is based upon how you all you know procure folks, and it is going to be your decision. Um, we very much don't want to make the decision for you. Um, we have, you know, robust experience. Um, we have insights that we provide as part of the process. We we do try to. Uh, do a little bit of an arm's length between us and the final decision because, um, again, you know these are folks that we have to work with okay. across are the nation. Are you going to be I'm advising? Gonna... Are you going to be advising Mark, Director what... Sable? Yes, I'm going to. I I'm in the interest of time. Could we try and wrap this up in the next five minutes? No. So I um, I believe you. If we don't want to ask any more but... questions, I'll vote against this because it is incomplete. I don't have a problem with PFM as a firm or their qualifications, but what is described in this scope of work uh, is very incomplete and uh, it doesn't answer any of the questions that I would have going forward, including negotiation of terms with the, with the uh, airlines. I don't even understand that. And we're gonna be spending $86,000 and we don't know exactly what we're going to get because it isn't described and there are no deliverables in here. There's no timeline except 12 months. And uh, so I will vote vigorously against this proposal, not because we don't need it, not because the firm isn't legitimate, but they didn't do an adequate job of describing what they're going to do and how the benefit is, how what we're going to receive in return. So I will I I vote against the thing. Okay, Director Sabo, thank you, and thank you for the questions. Could you, are there things that you'd like to see in addition? Uh, can you give guidance to staff or to our consultants? Yes, with, I just I said that. I wanted explanations of those de deliverable items. I wanted a time schedule that says we're going to deliver uh, this by this time, and uh, I want to know what the people, what this firm is going to be providing versus having Mark provide it or other people provide us. And uh, so, and I am very concerned about what their role in negotiations with the airlines is going to be and what, what experience they have in that. In other words, this sketch of, of tasks that they're gonna do over a 12 month period has no conclusions in it. And I guess I'm a little concerned, uh, it's just an anecdote here that uh, we're going to be paying an administrative assistant $250 an hour for this for this work. So that's okay. the questions I have. More details on what we're going to receive and when we're going to receive it. Um, and uh, in before I can support this this contract. Madam Chair, um, to address Director Sabo's concerns. Uh, one firm will not be responsible for the timeline, nor all of the deliverables. All of the firms that we hire will jointly put that together. So those deliverables will come to you. It's just not solely the responsibility of PFM to do. Who they is responsible of, for the They timeline. are one of the members of the team that has yet to be assembled. This is the first step in assembling the team. As the team is is rounded out, 
It will include someone like Landerman Brown. Landerman Brown is a possibility. There are other firms out there as well. We will work with PFM to determine what firm they work well with. We want the best firm available. We want the best team available. Um, we'll do the same with legal counsel. Um, what firms do has PFM worked with? We haven't worked with bond counsel previously in this organization. So we're gonna rely on PFM to help guide us through that that selection as well. Every one of the contracts that we recommend to you will be part of what PFM gives us advice and counsel on. So we're not building, this is not the completion of the team, this is the beginning of the construction of the team. I don't know if that helps you. There's nothing that will be a direct deliverable just from PFM. It will be folded into all of the work of the balance of the team. Well, it doesn't help. And I'll tell you why it doesn't help. Because we're spending $86,000, which is, you know, kind of a rounding error. But we're still spending $86,000 for something that is very critical to us. And that is good advice, apparently. Mm -hmm. And um, their in the, uh, PFM has not indicated what they're going to do uh, in terms of that advice. I guess I don't know who's running this project. Is Mark running the project? Are you running the project? Is PFM running the project? We just, you know, agreed that uh, Kimley Horn was going to oversee our construction projects out here. This has no nobody in charge, and I, I, I guess what I'm learning here is is that Mark carries the burden of going to market with a uh, for us with a team that he assembles based on advice from uh, PFM, advice from L and B and you carry the load on this. This is so critically important. We're not just taking out a little line of credit here for our credit card. You know, this oh, is I, gonna I, be like 20 to $40 million bond indenture, you know? And so I'm trying to figure that out. The people that have been working on this project that we've been paying money to from uh, uh, PFM for financial advice on this thing going forward, I say, and it's not my job, you know, I will advise you, but I'm not my job, but we're going to develop a bond indenture for you, right? As one of our first texts, like we've never done that before. So we have to spend a lot of time doing that. And then we're going to negotiate with the airlines. I don't know if they're going to negotiate with the airlines on our behalf. Is that going to be land or amount, or is that going to be you? No. Though there's too many questions in, involved here, and you asked me to be rather specific, I want those questions answered before I can support this. And, and that was going to be my question, Vice Chair. Do you feel that you have understanding of some more of the information I that do. he's looking for? I do. And okay. Unfortunately, much of that will not be available in PFM's scope of work. It will be in the larger program as we build the team, so I can't address Mr. Sabo's concerns in that scope of work. Okay. There will I've, be a totality of the balance of the contracts. <laughs> I've got a couple questions. I'm going to try and I, I appreciate your questions, Bill, and it sounds like they do understand some of your concerns. And um, Director Lovell has something, and then I'd like to ask a few questions. I just have one question. Brian, in your capacity, um, and you've been working with us now for what, three years? Um, if along the way, if anywhere along this way, if you see a huge obstacle, I am assuming, and I don't want to assume wrong here, that in all of these tasks and things that one of your roles is to say, stop, you are not gonna have a feasibility of providing the income that you're gonna need to sustain a, I'm gonna pick a number, $40 million bond into the future. <clears throat> it just is not gonna work. And that that is partly what we are hiring you for. It's kind of like hiring uh, Kimley Horn uh, to oversee a construction project. If they see something, it's their responsibility to us to say, stop the, stop the thing because right now we've got an issue. And 
that's what I see as part of what you're doing. You are shepherding us. You are guiding us um, with the numbers that are provided to you from us, from our other um, consultants that we have not yet determined and or hired. But the point is that you are the overall eyes that we are hiring to make sure that we don't get out of step with where we are planning to be three to five years from now. Is that correct? Yes, that is uh, that is said very well and succinctly. That is that is absolutely correct. I, to reinforce that point, we have a regulatory mandated fiduciary responsibility. So we have to do what is in your best interest um and have to give you advice that is in your best interest and so we will do all the things that you described but we will do so in a way that is man you know we operate this way anyway which is in your best interest but we also have a fiduciary responsibility so you know there is a there are legal and regulatory teeth behind it um, to act in your best interest we do not want to move in a path that is not in your best interest, both for your protection, but also because going to something, going to the bond market or to investors with something that isn't going to work is only going to hurt you in the long run. Um, and so going out there and, and you know, not being successful uh, you know, both isn't financially good thing for you all, but is going to impair your ability to then access the markets, you know, going forward as well. And so we will be carefully working throughout this process um, to, you know, and part of this is we know that the world is going to change. It is going to be different 12 months than it, 12 months from now than it is today. It was different in June of 2022 versus when we started working on this. And certainly we went through unprecedented times. And so part of our job is, is to maneuver through that and or to say, you know, what we thought was going to work is no longer going to work. Um, I'm hopeful that's not the case. I don't think that's going to be the case, but, uh, but we have to be, you know, prepared for it. And it is, it is partly our job to, to wave the flag if that is the case. Um, and our distinction there is that fiduciary responsibility. Um, we are the, the firm that has that. We are the firm that has to act in your best interest. I think you made a very apt sort of correlation there with Kimley Horn. We will oversee this process. We, we do not go into a vacuum and you know, and come back and say, "Here's your bond transaction. All you have to do is sign the dotted line." It, it is a collaborative process. We have to work with Mike and Mark, um, and and ultimately, there are decisions that will be theirs, or a decision that will, you know, ultimate decisions that will certainly be the board's. But we will help oversee and advise on it based on our, you know, numerous experience bringing these transactions and credits uh, to market. And just providing general uh, financial advice and analysis, um, uh, you know, for airports across the country, uh, we're ahead of the game in a lot of ways. The the plan of finance work that has been done uh, puts you and this component of what's needed ahead of the game. It will make the drafting of the feasibility report much uh, much easier, and, and because you've already done a lot of the work. Uh, but there are other components of bringing a transaction to market that we haven't started yet. Um, and, and kind of the purpose here is that the time is now and um, we are going to help initiate those other areas where a lot of the financial analysis and planning side were sort of ahead of, uh, ahead of the rest. Uh, thank you. So I'm going to say one thing and then I'm, I'm done. Two Actually, I'm going to say two. I'm going to go back to when you started with us and the direction that you had thought you were going in was directly not what Director Sonny and I uh, remembered that the board wanted. And you took a step back. You took a couple of months and you came back to us with the um, 
options that we had originally asked for, not just one plan of attack. You came back with options. Mm -hmm. And for me, that gave me a a modicum of comfort that you were work, you were listening to the board and that you were working for the board with the staff uh, to give us what we had asked for. And so I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable based on that 2019, early 2020 experience um, when uh, Director Sani and I were on the finance committee that you do listen and, but you also know what's out there in the greater world to give us the opportunities to make good choices. So um, I'm, I will be in favor of this and I just want to thank you. And I'm like, keep an open line of communication because we all read things and, and see things also, but it sounds to me like um, we're on the right path. So uh, thank you for letting me speak one more time. Mm -hmm. I just have a couple questions. Um, I'm looking, so we have four phases to date. Do we have an idea of how many phases we'll have? Of course, if we have another pandemic or something like that, I know there are things that we can't <laughs> know exactly, but do we have a sense of about how many phases this financial project or program should take? Brian, you're probably the best equipped to answer that one. Sure. And, and, and you know, we don't always phase it out quite like this. And part of that, you know, I think was also for the FAA's benefit. Um, there's after this would really be execution. Um, and there will be a host of um, decisions that the board will will need to make at that point. But the the next phase would really be, you know, we're prepared to go to market. You know, let's go to market. Um, and so that would be that would be the anticipated next phase. Now we and are, there are phases after that then too, or um, I mean, it really, I understand going to the bond market and you know solidifying that you get the entity you're looking for ultimately, the funding. Probably, probably not. Um, the caveat being that we continue to explore all options and try to look for. Uh, what is uh, what is really the best plan forward here? Um, you know, we're continuing to be mindful of things like the TIFIA program and the like. And so should that become a reality, you know, maybe that's sort of phase 5A and phase 5B if you're doing some combination of debt and TIFIA. Um, so probably, you know, probably not, but it will be a little bit determined by by exactly you know the form that this takes or future um, you know decisions that are made as to whether we're pivoting or anything anything like that. Um, oh, and then and, you, and then go yeah. ahead. No, and then you know just to the extent that if there were any future financings or the like, you know, suppose you know those could be considered kind of future phases. Yeah, sure. I think you know interest rates are also going up, so that's just something that in general, you know, will impact the numbers too. Could I, I, I'm, uh, Mr. Wilson, I know you haven't been here long. I don't know. Does anybody have the swag of the other three phases? What we kind of spent to date for phase one back in 2019 and two, and then three was 2022. I don't have that information. But roughly. But we could, but we could get We that. were, we were roughly. Half a mil? No, no. no. We were under a hundred thousand. I want to say it was more between. 50 no, for all no, three phases. No, no, I think no. into two about two hundred thousand. I think we're about two fifty. We're thought, between two ten and two fifty. Just PFM. No, I'm sorry. Okay. You're right. In total, yes. Okay, I'm just trying to understand. You know, I mean, because we've been researching this, and obviously we had the pandemic in the midst of things and that sort of thing. So it was just more from my knowledge more than anything. Um, one final question. Can we find potentially a firm, one firm to do the end-to-end -end bond issuances? It sounds like we're talking about a lot of different entities. Is it possible? Is that is is that not common? Are there reasons to not do that? Uh, yes. And one of those again is the is the regulatory and uh, so there are defined roles that different firms play. 
And it is important often for them to have independence. The checks and balances, um, essentially. Yes, then essentially, okay. and then and then of course you know legal counsel is is its own thing and and needs to, uh, you know, have all their certifications and <laughs> everything that goes with 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 uh, you know, with that. Um, sure. There is a, a definitive separation between the folks that will place the debt um and and us as your advisors and some of your other team members and that exists due to conflicts of interest largely um and and so you want again we are the firm that from a regulatory standpoint is on your side of the table thank you i'm going to go ahead and take it out to public comment if there's any public comment on this item i'm seeing heads that are shaky, no. So I'll go ahead and close it. I do wanna note that I also missed public comment on item G0 and G1. And as soon as this item is addressed, I will address that. My apologies for missing that earlier. I take responsibility for that and I'm sorry about that. All right, where would the board like to go? I'll make a motion that we approve the um, PFM uh, Fourth phase for a total of not to exceed eighty thousand two hundred and fifty. Do I hear a second? Okay, motion dies for lack of a second. Do I hear anything else? What's your alternative? I'll go ahead and I, I think this should probably go to the full board. Uh, I had concerns about it coming into the meeting, but I wanted to see what the discussion was and whether there was any public feedback as well. Um, I would recommend that we move this to the next board meeting. And, so we'll see it on May 31st. And yeah, and address it on May 31st with the entire board. We'll also have the two year plan at that point, which is important to me as we look at spending more money to really understand um, the big picture. So that would be my recommendation. Um, to the attorney, should I go ahead and make that motion or what do we need to do? If there's concurrence of the board, it doesn't need to be a motion. We can, we can certainly That's what I thought, but I'm just confirming. I have see, no objection. See it on the 31st. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thank yes, you. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back for public comment on G0, which was added today, which was the emergency item added discussion of the ILS issues and aircraft landing and takeoff. Scott, is that good enough? Or that's what my notes are. <laughs> yeah, that, that's oh. okay. So if there's any public comment on that item, again, we did discuss it and I'm opening up public comment as it was not requested at the time. And then I'll go ahead and not seeing anybody who'd like to speak in the audience here. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with G1, the amendment to the professional services agreement with Kim Lee Horn and Associates Inc. to provide project management services in support of the safety enhancement program, taxiway A relocation, design management services, terminal design. Anyone like to make comment on that? All right, well, at least <laughs> we had the opportunity to. And I am going to request that we take a break for seven minutes and return at 11.25. Perfect. That work for everybody? <laughs> no. Yes, yeah, Scott's out in the hallway. All right, and we are back right at 11.25. Remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see, we're going to go ahead and go to Attorney Huber. Oh, there, Attorney Huber is now coming in. Uh, I've just been informed that Director Sable has a hard stop at 1230. And I think addressing our closed session item is probably more important than the drone and bloom regulations, or that should come after. I'm looking for concurrence from the board if others feel that way as well. I concur. I would agree. All right. So that means we will we go. We still care about your balloon. <laughs> we you know do. That, that information isn't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to closed session now. Okay.
then and then come out and finish with the time we have as we are um, challenged with only three people here for a quorum. So we just hit the stop button a little too soon. We're gonna go ahead and take public comment and I'll ask attorney Huber to um, update us on the closed session matter before I take public comment. So we'll be going into closed session uh, pursuant to government code 54957.6 sub B, sub B, sub two. The board will meet with the executive director and general, general counsel re related to potential exposure to litigation one case. All right, public comment. No, no public comment uh, requested. So we will now go to closed session at 15 or 12. It's 12 16 in the afternoon, where we're returning to the regular meeting of the Monterey Peninsula Airport District Board of Directors meeting on May 17th at 9 a.m. Scott, do you want to report out on our closed session item? Happy to. Uh, following the discussion in closed session, there is no reportable action taken in closed session, but I do want to note that there were some documents that uh, that that were handed out to board members and, and there's nothing confidential in them, so you are free to utilize them in your discussions with individuals related to the uh, the hangars and the status of the of the rental of the of the hangars that the airport has. The aviation hangars, I should be more clear. Inside well, the fence. Are there other kind? There's some outside. Will that get on a website or how would someone uh, be able to get that information? Yeah, I, I, I think we, we, can, we can disseminate this to individuals who, have, who we have talked about, Talk to, who, talk we have, to. who have talked to us about it. Okay. And, and if anybody else wants it, they can request it. Okay. So reach out to attorney Huber for reach the out, documents yeah. Or, yeah, and you out. will reach out to those that have been. All right. And in, in the interest of time, Director Sabo, you have a hard stop at 1230, correct? Yes. For medical. Okay. So I'm just looking at. We can buzz through the reports probably. We can. I think I wanted the future agenda items, which I had addressed at the beginning. I have some item. on departmental reports. Okay. Yep. I will get to departmental reports. Could I just confirm with the executive director on item K? We will have a review of the six month and two year SEP plan at our next meeting, which will likely be the full board on the 31st. Is that? that was, I believe that was discussed. I'm, I'm just confirming or just, just yes. confirming that. And then um, consideration of the revision of the board governance manual. I'm feeling like we need to have an ad hoc committee created for that unless the board feels there that we want to have this for the full board to look at. I would point out that the governance manual is part of my contract and it sets the governance manual at the time that we executed the contract as the governance manual for the district. Okay, so back to um, so that date. A revision of the governance manual would be a violation of my contract. Of the current contract, yes. correct? Now we've done, yes. Okay. Now we have done revisions that don't impact the relationship between the executive director, whether it's me or future, um, and the board. If we're if we're not in violation, if we're not changing that relationship, then I'm fine with re with revisions. Mm -hmm. But if it changes that relationship, it's in violation of my contract. Okay. And I appreciate that the contract is in place. So, um, Scott, could you advise? Because I believe we've got a contract, three years, and extensions coming up as well. Yes. With that, could you um, just highlight that a bit more? Sure. So there, there, um, there are some extensions that are built into into the agreement. <clears throat> what what uh, what uh, the executive director Lapierre is referring to is the governance manual and ordinance nine hundred nine. I think it is um, the contract incorporates those and in, in sets them in stone, saying that 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 until the contract expires, that no modifications then will be effective against the executive director or effective against the relationship 
to modify the relationship that, that's outlined in those documents. I think 909 spoke to how the majority of the board uh, was required in order to relieve the, uh, um, the executive director, I think. That's what I remember from 909. It didn't encompass everything that the board did with the, uh, with the, direct, uh, the executive director. Right, okay. but but again, the, it did it did incorporate the governance manual as well into the agreement. Wow. And so what so what I'm what I'm what I'm getting at is you, we can we can certainly look at modifications to the governance governance manual that you'd like to adjust. For example, some of the, well, I'll use one of them uh, that was talked about at the last meeting, modifying public comment so that individuals have three minutes. Or, although if there are ten or more individuals. Then it would drop down to, and I think it was 90 seconds to a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got I've got it in my notes. It's either two minutes or 90 seconds. I can't 90, remember. 90, I think, is what we did. Yeah. So or maybe 15. So that's not something that would impact the, the 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 agreement with the executive director. That can be made without any without any issue. Anything that would impact the executive director or his functions, uh, then would you can certainly change it, but it would not be effective until the contract expired. You had. How about setting the agenda? Well, the, that would again; those are included in there. And and if if you want, we can certainly go over setting the agenda. There are procedures to set the agenda in the governance manual. In the existing. In the existing one. Yeah. Okay. So I think full board discussion would be best for that at this point. And I know Scott, you've got that to bring back what is um, what had been discussed. I certainly understand what the executive director is saying as well. And I guess I'm trying to understand, do we need to go back to the 2018 packet? I think we've had a couple revisions or all the revisions that have been made to date have been agreed to my, with my modifications. The ones that we've made to date are fine. Okay, all right, I appreciate that. All right, we'll take that to the next meeting and then um, intro oh, of the- Wait, wait oh, not to the next okay. meeting, because that's May 31st. I'm sorry, <laughs> to June, to June. To the next There's board no meeting, meeting, regular board meeting in June. We'll leave it on pending or we will. So it will be it will be in the it, it's on pending right now. It will be on the June meeting. The, the June third meeting. Wednesday in June. The June regular meeting. Yep. So it will continue until June. Yep. And I I would request that again the intro of the new police chief, whether he is known to us or not, as he is in a new role as well as the police services contract at least be discussed with the board at that meeting in June as well. Give me some clarification. What is it that you would like to discuss about the current police contract? I just, I don't have, con I didn't have context because the police contract was entered into before I, had, I joined this board. I know that there's another person, granted he had other roles, and other positions within yeah, he's, this. He's integral in the negotiation of that contract, so he's, he's painfully familiar. But I'm, I was not, and okay. I think it's, it, I think to me, and this is, you know, where we get to contracts and some of these things, we need to just, you know, as things are renewed, as things come up, and our board will change. It's a diverse board. We've got five different districts represented, and I think it's important as contracts come up that, you know, even if they've gotten an automatic extension or things like that, I think there needs to be awareness. I understand we have some board members who have been here 10 or 15 years. That's not my case. I've been here three. Okay. So what, just so I'm succinct here, what you want to hear is when a contract is ready for its automatic renewal, you want to know that. Mm -hmm. Fine. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. We can mm -hmm. do that. And I'd like to be introduced. I'd like the chief to introduce himself to the board as we've discussed with other employees too. All right, and then the quarterly closed session with board. Now that that's a standing quarterly item. Mm -hmm. Does the board think that comes to our May meeting or we wanna push that, kick that to June? June. I don't have an opinion. Okay, we will kick it to June. And that will be in anticipation of then we will start the review process. Mm -hmm. That'll be our last review before we start the review. <clears throat> and is it possible to get the, um, we, well, we did get the document in this packet on what was done. Which you, got the, you got an activity report. Mm -hmm. What I typically do when we do the 
closed session review is review status of goals. And that I will give you when we get there. Quarterly. Correct. And it was last done in February. So that's why my request was that it was done in May. All right. We got five minutes. Who would like to, what would someone like to address? I want to, I, I, we skipped over uh, departmental reports. Can yes. we return to that? Absolutely. We will return to item H, board committee reports and acceptance of department reports. I have some questions on department reports. Okay. Go ahead, Director Sable. Um, on department reports, um, the uh, on the ops, this is an ongoing request on my part, but I think it's even more important right now is is about consulate cancellations for uh, the distinction between inbound cancellations and outbound cancellations. Um, I get a lot of heat from uh, uh, members of the TAMSI board, which is all the mayors, all the supervisors. Uh, they want to know uh, if we're canceling here because they have the mythology that they can't, you can't get out of here because we cancel a lot of flights. I'm not able, we just talk about cancellations in the statistics we get. And uh, there got to be a way that we can identify at least the cancellations that are originating out of Monterey versus inbound cancellations. So uh, I make that request of the operations department. Um, uh, I noticed in our cap uh, discussion of capital expenditures, there was a request to uh, spend $100,000 on a, on a new truck, uh, an EB truck. I went back and I was looking at uh, uh, the project reports and I noticed that back in 2022, we bought a new uh, maintenance truck. And so uh, do we need two maintenance trucks? You know, because we have a brand new one in 2022. We have, we have more than two. Oh, okay. Uh, so the truck that is that we're proposing to replace is a 2003. 2003. How many maintenance trucks do we have? Six. You know, six. Okay. So this is just kind of cycling through this the. A, this is a replacement for a 2003, we believe. Is it the oldest one we've got? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Answers the question. Um, you did a nice reporting of uh, activities here, uh, particularly regarding. Um, the uh, Salinas Chamber and uh, uh, the PR work done in Salinas. And I, I did see you over at the awards ceremony over at uh, Salinas. I know they're thrilling, but um, it's important. And I congratulate you for doing that. I mean, that presence there in Salinas, as well as the rest of the Salinas Valley is very important, you know. And uh, so uh, you... I guess you did a, uh, a presentation uh, in Salinas uh, on a public relations basis. What was the feedback that you got? And I presume that was to the chamber, right? We did one to the chamber and one to uh, Salinas Rotary. Feedback's very positive in both regards. What kind of, are they asking questions of you or what well, do they say? A little bit. Um, mostly it's, it's, it's questions about air service. Yeah. Um, that really is the preponderance of the questions we get when we do those. Are they are they urging you to get some flights to a specific destination or anything like that? <laughs> Palm Springs. Palm I've Springs. heard that one. <laughs> Sign me up. And Tucson. Especially Tucson. <laughs> Tucson. Yeah. Well, that's... yeah. Although my wife would enjoy that. <laughs> Okay, I, and when you give those reports, to the extent that you give, uh, and I, I like the re the reports that you're doing, could you give us some sense of, uh, other than you just appeared before a group, give us some sense of what the, what the feedback was? Like, I think you did one up at Aptos or somewhere up there. I'm interested in, in what they're saying, and I, it's good information to have. Um, uh, on the, uh, when we were, doing the fire contract you did a video uh that was trying to correct uh some of the erroneous things that the city was saying uh do you recall that mm -hmm. i think sure. you know to the maximum extent possible that if you're going to do a 
a PR video um, to, on a specific situation. Yeah, to try to let the, the board kind of preview it and as, add some comments because I was I wasn't very happy with that uh, attack on on the city uh, in in that video, and I I think some there been a, there might have been some benefit uh, if there was some board input on it if we're going to go public with a with a video and uh, so that's my request if you're going to do a video particularly on very sensitive matters involving the public and you know, public feedback um, and the cities, maybe bring them to the board first or put them up somewhere on a uh, secure uh, link where we can view them on, on online before we go forward. Because um, that whole fire contract in my mind, from a PR standpoint was a mess. Okay. Um, and that's all I had. I had uh, was prepared to talk about uh, some of the capital expense uh, items that we had in the finance committee, but um, we'll we'll defer all that. So anyhow, that's my comments on the uh, board reports. Now, yes, I'm done. One question, Director Leffel, you didn't have anything. No, we, we kind of did. Round Robin here um, on the operations uh, planning, environmental and maintenance monthly project report. It's just page one agenda item H5, the commercial ramp construction. We've received three bids and it looks like we've got an amount for over 41 million. Mm -hmm. That's gonna come to staff or that's gonna come to the board. When we have a grant, when we have a grant announcement. Okay, so likely June, July, this summer sometime. Hopefully soon. Okay, yeah. whenever that comes through. All right, I, that's, I, I had a few other things, but we'll let it go in the time of interest. And I wanna congratulate the board for getting through things in three and a half hours, uh, as well as staff. I have one additional item. I oh. think we need to push this to the next, I, did this come up? Uh, I mean, he spent a lot of work. Uh, yep. Did it yep. get moved to the next meeting? Yes. Uh, I missed June. that. June meeting. June, June meeting. June. Okay. Yes. We didn't want you to be ignored. I want to see you. <laughs> Are you going to bring balloons <laughs> into Denver? When were balloons? When was that an issue? Wasn't that like February? When the ones uh, that were, yeah, it was February, was March. During, it's been a while. During the Chinese balloon incident. Yeah, that that's when that came up. Although I'll, I'll, All right. I will, but the airspace is. Once the meeting ends, I'll show you a quick video that we'll see in the, balloons have been an issue for a while, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We we know that even from some events here and people going, no, we can't have balloons. All right, 1233, we are officially adjourned. Okay. If